MotoGP experience, finished last season really strongly. So on that number seven machine, what's he going to be do, able to do all the way through this season? Well, on one bad weekend, first time out in uh, Motorland Aragon, three third places, battling third places they were as well because he was another weekend of really grinding out uh, points uh, on a circuit that didn't seem to, to favour the Yamahas. This is another venue that he hasn't got the, the best the past so there was a lot of positives for rage take i think going into that weekend if you had said to him i'll give you three points on both calendar and he can try and really take advantage of where the kawasaki works well because the kawa does work really well around this track the only three margins in the two races on sunday to win a super pole race by by five seconds is pretty darn impressive uh, bautista does it new fastest lap of one minute 35.114 and that's uh, almost two tenths of a second faster than uh, right for a third of a second and that's just at the halfway mark so uh, Top Rack deciding that it's uh, time to, to push a little. Uh, still uh, to what we were saying about Bautista. Dominant victory margins uh, for the two Sunday races in Aragon. So uh, we know the course of uh, Sunday in Aragon. I think that it's also a little bit skewed by the fact that we would you said it previously about riders almost um, dropping back down the pecking order just because of the, the, the depth of the field that there is. I mean, you, you'd expect to be uh, in, under normal circumstances further up the order, but um, previous race winners, Eugene Laverty. Yeah, we look at it that we're going to have the factory Ducati, Kawasaki and Yamaha riders at the front of the field, so typically with Bautista. Then you look at the second group and some of the other guys that have gone out there on the X tire, especially Bautista, eight tenths of a second off. Let's see what step he can make.